Hello everyone, my name is uh, Ipatios, Ipatios Moesiadis. I am the uh, Business Development Director and UK Country Manager for Greensolver. Greensolver is a traditional third-party service provider for technical and commercial asset management services. And we also do technical advisory and construction management as owners and engineers. We're currently um, uh, working, or we have under management about 1.6 gigawatts around Europe. Uh, and we have about 14.5 uh, uh, gigawatts of TA projects on, under our belts on a global scale, uh, from Brazil to the States to Australia. Um, and what we aim, what we do is we try to provide further value to our investors, to our clients, uh, not only on the finance side, but also uh, enabling them uh, to utilize what they have, uh, whether this is capitalizing the information we get, the data we get, or the everyday interactions we have on the sites with all the different stakeholders, in order for those sites to perform better. And by performing better, we are, we are allowing them to, to uh, extend their portfolios. Um, I would agree with Ed that what we see in the traditional asset management, uh, third, asset, third party asset management business is an evolution um, of, of some of the traditional models. What I could say on that is that traditionally, if you would like, asset managers were getting involved more on the operational stage onwards. Uh, so uh, you, would, you would see asset management uh, being performed from FAC onwards or from initial acceptance onwards. But now what we see is that we, uh, we, we are called upon to go vertical, so start the asset management process and even support um, the, the investors and the developers to different breeds in the, same, in the same sector, but support them from very early stage because we have accumulated as industry and experience of how to build what are the best practices to do something and by getting us involved very early in the stage, they are, they are, uh, they are having true economies. Um, uh, and if you would like, they, they optimize things that could go wrong down the line. So we're capitalizing on the experience. And I think this is the important point that I would like to make as an evolution of the third party uh, uh, service, uh, service providers. So let's, let's, let's start with um, some, some harsh truths, okay? Moving towards an unsubsidized environment means that any given contract will have many more moving parts. If you go into a contract with a corporate and you fail to deliver on the contract, you can be penalized. So the asset manager has to be much more informed and hands-on, and it's not just a uh, you know a valid a document validator that pretty much um, an asset management uh, you know service provider was doing at the beginning of the solar uh, of the solar boom that we were there because the bankers want them uh, you know wanted a third-party independent provider or because there was not internal expertise. Now we have more and more and companies like all, all your companies, that they are building internal technical expertise. And we appreciate the fact that uh, it's not perhaps feasible to have uh, you know, hundreds of people in the teams, uh, depending on your business model, but that doesn't mean that you're, not more, that you're not informed. So you know now, the investors know exactly where the risks lie and what they want from a service provider. And they go into detail in these kind of contracts, yeah, very detailed contracts. Now, given the fact that we have, we're going to have so many interactive parts, as, as, as I said, the asset manager need to, needs to involve to a stage where we take data and data interpretation seriously. So the, 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 the time to respond perhaps on a solar panel, on a solar site, doesn't matter if you pick up something you know, in, in, in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, on a storage situation, you have to be able to respond on 60 seconds. Because this is, you know, a decision whether you're gonna make money on that pot or money on that pot. So it's, it's, it's much more complicated. So even the evolution, even the tools we use will need to be involved 
into a stage where we'll they will allow us to do our work. So there's a lot of discussion about in, in the industry. There's a, you know, a lot of generalization in the industry. Everybody's talking about big data and AI and all of that. But it's actually how do we start interpreting those big words and these fancy words into specific actions that we can install in a process that we follow to deliver a specific service, de-risking a contract for our clients. I would, I would start from a, from a different point. Everybody wants to take informative decisions based on data. The big question we haven't actually answered in the industry is who's going to pay for it? Because traditionally what I've seen uh, is that asset management contracts as O&M contracts, they get more and more and more and more competitive and the prices are driven down and down and down. So the question is, the investor might want to have big data or they might want to have access to, uh, uh, you know, to processed information which will allow him to take you know, better decisions. But who's going to pay for that? The, the, the question to that, uh, the answer to that, partly the answer to that is that the asset manager, the, 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 the service providers will pay part of that and they will develop the tools because this will allow them to become more competitive and stay in the market. So you're saying it's a little bit self-cannibalization? Well, perhaps, yeah, and we have to be honest. Uh, um, and we've seen that again and again, we've seen that in, in every service industry. Um, so the question is, is that yes, we need to invest, we need to embrace uh, the, the, you know, the R&D, we need to build different teams, but it's not just also about just the tools or just, just how do you capture the information or you know, the, the, the software or the hardware bit is about the team and the people. So it's about building, building expertise and becoming an expert in, in, in data interpretation, in technical data interpretation. So it's not just the tools, but it's the people. And there is, I think I've said that, I've said that again on a different context, that we forget that we need to build and invest in our people in order to progress forward. It's not just about automation. So this is the point that I have to make on, on big data. Other than that, I think that as asset managers, uh, both in Green Solver, but also uh, speaking as the uh, Solar Power Europe uh, Vice Chair in, in, in Asset Management and O&M Working Group, um, we, we see that we need to start transforming and going from a linear management model, where you have the asset in one side, and then you have the O&M, and then you have the asset manager, and then you have the asset owner. We need to go into a holistic management approach where the data is at the center and we take informative decision based on that. And we use the monitoring systems, not just for producing reports and ticking a box, but actually digging a bit more into them and seeing trends and seeing the data that we have for three, five years of operational assets. Related to the point on data, uh, one of the enabling technologies that has been outlined more in terms of uh, sharing uh, or collaborating between multiple entities the need to coordinate transactions in close to real time is blockchain technology. So I was curious to know if any of the panelists had any view on the potential that this technology could have to streamline processes, to enable new business models uh, related to the comments that you were making. Thank you. A very, a very short answer from me and then uh, you can share your opinion as well. Uh, blockchain is, is purely a ledger. It's, 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 that's what blockchain is. Um, I think that we have many other problems to solve on how we manage data and whether we have the processes in place to actually read the data correctly before we go into looking at these technologies. And that's my personal opinion, looking at you know, um, how the industry has been involving. Um, so yeah, we, we, uh, we, we see people uh, looking at this, but I don't think that uh, we, as an industry, we're at that stage yet.